Today, we're looking at this Raspberry Pi alternative. Everybody is scrambling to buy their own Raspberry Pi for under 50 bucks. As you know, that's impossible because everybody else is selling it for like 100 plus bucks. I'm happy to say this works perfectly fine as a Raspberry Pi alternative. Well, I should say I've been using it for Octoprints, using it as a serial to Wi-Fi adapter so that I can control my laser engraver. For home automation, I'm still using thin clients because this thing is still using micro SD card and micro SD card cannot be reliable in the long term. This thing from a physical perspective is identical to the Raspberry Pi as you can see. Here on the left is the Raspberry Pi 3. The middle is the Le Potato model that we're looking at right now. It does not have Wi-Fi so you'll need a Wi-Fi dongle, USB dongle adapter thing. It is very picky, so I would suggest getting a micro SD card that is very fast. You need a micro USB power supply, just like the Raspberry Pi, and it needs at least 2.5 amp to power up this thing reliably. This is a shot from one on the other side. As you can see, physically, they are identical. They use the same case as well. Here's another shot from the side. Sorry for the blurry picture. Originally, I had no idea what I'm working with, so I relied on this Instructables page. It shows how to set up the Le Potato to run Octoprint. So if you're going to use this for Octoprint, follow this guide. But here's the thing. In this video that you're watching, it's going to be a little bit different because he installed a full flavor of Ubuntu, and we really don't need that. For what we're going to do, which is for Octoprint or Serial to Wi-Fi Adapter, all we need is a very basic OS. Go here to ambient.com slash lepotato slash download it, direct download it. Once you download, unzip it so that you get an IMG file. Here's the IMG file right here. This is what it should look like once you unzip it using 7-zip. Burn this to your micro SD card using the Win32. Go ahead and open the IMG file. Select your micro SD card drive and then hit write. Once you're done writing the IMG file to this micro SD card, go ahead and insert it into this end. Plug your Ethernet core into here, into your Wi Fi network. Plug an HDMI cable to your monitor. Plug the Wi Fi adapter into the USB. It doesn't matter which one, it doesn't matter which slot. Plug the power cable into here, into the micro USB slot. Don't forget to plug a USB keyboard into one of the USB slot. And go ahead and plug this into the wall so that you can power it up for the first time. This is what it looks like when you power it up for the first time. It's going to ask you for a password. Go ahead and enter the password. Repeat the same password again. If you try something simple like password123, it will not work. So do something fancier. Choose ZSH by pressing the number 2. Go ahead and create another username and create the password for that username. Repeat the password to verify that it is correct. Click on yes to choose the language. Go ahead and choose one because we're in US. Now we're going to set up the Wi-Fi adapter. The Wi-Fi adapter we have is 2.4 as well as 5 gigahertz. On 5 gigahertz, it is crazy fast. You can copy and paste this command in sudo app install network dash manager. Go ahead and enter the password. Next, copy and paste this in nmcli space d. As you can see, our Ethernet is still connected. The Wi-Fi is not connected. Go ahead and list all of the Wi-Fi access points in your house by using this command and paste it in. Next, we're going to connect to one of our Wi-Fi. So go ahead and copy and paste this in. Basically, you're telling it to connect to the access point TMVC and then the password. In my sample, it's pass123. Obviously, change TMVC as well as pass123 to your actual Wi-Fi network. It takes a while for it to connect to your access point, but this is what you see once it connects successfully to your Wi-Fi access point. 
Now you are all done setting up your Le Potato to get onto your Wi-Fi network and you can do whatever you want to do with it. To continue with setting up Octoprint, go ahead and follow this page. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect Lightburn wirelessly to your laser engraver. So go ahead and copy and paste this command in. By the way, once you are connected successfully to your Wi-Fi network, you can go ahead and use PuTTY to log in and control from there. You don't have to type in manually anymore. You can just copy and paste and into PuTTY. So here you can see that I'm in PuTTY already. I logged in successfully and I'm just going to copy and paste this to set up the serial to Wi-Fi. I'm not going to hit enter because I did it already. Finally, download virtual here. I'm using Windows 64-bit, so download the virtual here 64-bit version. Double click on it to run it. When you open it for the first time, it should see your Le Potato, and then it will have a label for serial some, somewhere here. My laser engraver is off at the moment, but if it's on, it will say something about serial right here. Double click on it, and then it will give you a COM port number. Let's say virtual here gives you a COM port number of COM25. So go ahead in Lightburn, choose COM25, and now your laser engraver should connect wirelessly to Lightburn. When it does that, it should auto home. It's amazing. Now, to properly shut this down, you have to do sudo space shutdown space dash capital H space now. For whatever reason, using any other commands will not work. This is what it looks like on my deck right now. Very messy, but at least you don't see the laptop connected anymore because right now we're using a little potato and it's connected to the USB port of the Comgro Z1 laser. Now that we're in the comfort of our house with the laser engraver out on the deck, we can hit on frame to get a preview of where it'll go. And there you go. Works pretty amazing, isn't it? Sorry for the screen flickering. Let's get a preview before we actually engrave something. I always do that just to verify. And when we click on start, the laser starts engraving. It's truly magical. I have a wireless camera outside to monitor the whole thing as well. Here's another angle from the wireless camera. The last thing you want to do is accidentally look into the laser while you're monitoring it. That's a big no-no. Alright, hopefully this video helps you use the Raspberry Pi alternative. Helps you with light burn. Connect wirelessly to your laser engraver. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel. And thanks for watching.